So I would love for anything to be with someone and to be able to appreciate them instead of finding faults with them after a while. It just, it hurts to, to not be able to experience someone as much as they're experiencing and appreciating myself as well. Well, you're really going to like this because we're going to explain all of this to you about why it's as it has been and what to do about it. You've been hearing us talk all day here today about how your exposure to life causes you to create a vibrational escrow. So there is this vibrational escrow that is being created out of the contrast that you are living. And you have created a vision of a relationship that is phenomenal. And when you allow yourself the opportunity to go with the flow to that relationship, you will know it when you find it. And when you find the relationship that is a vibrational match to what's been waiting for you over there, not only will you know it as all the bells and whistles go off, as it sort of feels like in the infatuation that you're talking about, but it will be an enduring experience because the sensation of the relationship will continue to expand. In other words, once inside the relationship, you will continue to add to it. And as you go with the flow, you will continue to keep up with it. So one of two things could be happening that could be tripping you up. One of the things that happens, it's a very common thing, is that you have created this magnificent vibrational escrow, but by virtue of the drums you are beating and so on, you're not staying up to speed with your own vision that you've created. But your impatience, because there are aspects about the relationship that you're wanting, your impatience about having a relationship causes you to move forward toward relationships, even though the universe has not yet yielded to you the one that you're really reaching for. And so it is always going to have great potential of eventually dissatisfying you because it isn't the one that you were ultimately on your way to. To ask any person, to be everything that you need is asking way too much. This is what we see as an ideal relationship. Someone who has a majority of things that I easily feel at ease with, things I like. Not someone who satisfies me on every single level because expansion is fun, but someone with whom I can easily be comfortable. Someone who, like me, understands that she is an expanding being, who is eager about life and eager about expanding and willing to keep up with who she is becoming. Mm -hmm. What happens in most relationships is you come together in that beginning, in that hopeful, connected state. In other words, you're looking for the positive aspects in each other, wanting to see what you want to see. And when you want to see what you want to see, you've closed your gap. So here's two people who have closed their gap, who are vibrationally in alignment with source coming together. And oh, does that ever feel good. And then, like most people, you then see something that you don't like as much and you separate yourself from you. And then you hold the other responsible for the less good way you feel because you felt good till you saw that and you hold them responsible for that thing you saw and now you think I must go somewhere else and find someone where that is not present and we say then you better get out of town too Follows. and off this planet and we don't know where to send you in other words finally you have to decide I'm the attractor of what I want and I can attract it from anyone I want to attract it from and then just pick the one that you think is the one you want and start attracting it but that's also another question is I've heard a lot lately because of my experience with relationships why don't you try open relationships you know or polyamorous relationships being with multiple people um, and you know a lot of people look at me like you know oh that's that's wrong but I mean is that wrong or I mean can that work and can multiple people it isn't wrong and the other isn't right it's just nice to experience you know so many different forms of well here, here's what we notice so if through your experience you have identified that you want to have a variety of relationships and 
you are in alignment with that. In other words, nobody's talked you into feeling bad about it. It is satisfying to you in all of the ways that it is satisfying to you. And so you are in alignment with you. And in that attitude of wanting to feel free and wanting to feel expansive and wanting to benefit by having relationships with a number of people, as you hold yourself in that pure vibration, and by pure we mean you don't contradict yourself, that's the way you feel. The universe will deliver to you others who feel the same way. And when you have others who are in alignment, who want the same thing, now you can have a comfortable, satisfying experience with many people. What happens so often is one feels that way and another wants monogamy. And the one who wants monogamy worries so much that she or he won't get it that he actually becomes a vibrational match to the opposite of what he wants, which brings him or her right to you. <laughs> you follow that, don't you? In other words, you get what you think about whether you want it or not. Let's talk about women. The majority of women who attract to themselves men who do not want monogamy, the majority of women who attract such men are women who really do want monogamy, but they are crosswise in their own current and they keep getting exactly what they don't want because that's what they give most of their attention to. So if two people want monogamy, and each are a vibrational match to the idea of that, then the universe will bring them together and they will have a wonderful experience together. If two people or more want open relationships and they are individually in alignment with the idea of an open relationship and they are offering a pure vibration about what they want, then the universe will bring them together and everyone lives happily ever after. The idea that everybody has to do the same thing, that comes from people feeling better when they see that condition and feeling worse when they see that condition and therefore believing that if they could just control those conditions, they would feel better. And people or a society or a couple or a person, anyone who tries to control conditions in order to feel better always ends up feeling worse because you cannot control conditions. It is impossible. Seems like there's so much uh, possessiveness in relationships that people you know, regard their mate as their mate, and as soon as their mate tries to appreciate something else, which they're always going to, it, there's a huge problem. And that's what I'm finding is... But, but you see, at yeah. the basis of someone who is behaving that way with you yeah. is someone who is not in alignment with who they are. In other words, someone who feels jealous of the attention you give to someone else is depending upon your attention for their well-being. In other words, when you're connected to source and you hold someone as your object of attention, they feel bathed in that, they love that. And then they say, you must always give me your undivided attention because you feed me. And then if you have the audacity to have any other interest at all and you look away from them for a moment, then they feel like a puppet that somebody has let go of the strings and then they pronounce to you, you don't make me feel like you once did. And what you want to say to them, or what would be accurate to say to them, is you're depending upon me for your life sustenance, and you should be looking to your own connection with source for that. I'm just a co-creator here. Don't hold me responsible for your connection to source. But you know yourself, when somebody appreciates you, it feels good. And so there are a lot of people that are dependent upon that connection because when someone appreciates them, they feel good. But then they are really in a powerless position because now they must find a way to control you, to assure themselves that they can maintain your undivided attention. And when they find out they can't, then they are lost. That's why we say what you're looking for is someone who's tuned in, tapped in, turned on. You're looking for someone who already gets it, that they feel good because they're in alignment and isn't holding you responsible for how they feel. Wouldn't you love to give that gift to someone else? Wouldn't you love to be one who says, you're not responsible for how I feel I am? Wouldn't you love to get let off the hook and to let others off the hook by saying, I take responsibility for how I feel? So we said to a woman one day, she said, will my son find a mate soon? And we said, hopefully not. <laughs>
She was shocked. How can that be? She thought that finding this mate was the thing that would help him most of all. And we said, if he finds her now, she will be just as disconnected as he is. She won't have a job either. She'll be in financial turmoil also. She won't like herself either. And they'll just bang around and make each other miserable until they break apart again. And this mother said, oh my, that's what's been happening. And we said, it's so much better to, in the meantime, before you actually manifest the relationship, to get in alignment with yourself. Because when you're in alignment with yourself, then you attract someone else who's also in alignment. If you've got a mixed bag going on, if sometimes you feel good and sometimes you don't, if sometimes you're going with the flow and sometimes you're going against the flow, then you're going to attract partners who are like that also, which means sometimes they'll feel good and sometimes they won't feel good. But if you have shown yourself that you can control the way you feel and you are deliberately moving with the flow and you are saying to those that you are interacting with things like, excuse me, I'm not feeling very good right now, but I'm gonna go off and think some thoughts that bring me back into alignment, you will attract someone to you who understands their own autonomy. And when you come into a relationship with someone like that, now you've got a basis for a wonderful relationship because now you can both be expansive. You don't have to be joined at the hip. You can do your own thing. You'll root for each other. You will do your best to stay in alignment, but you won't hold another responsible when you're not in alignment. Oh, it is a best of all worlds. I like you pretty good. Let's see how it goes. Say that to all of them them on the day that you meet them don't say oh I hope this lasts forever say oh this feels good right now and the reason that I think it feels so good is because I've got myself fixated on your positive aspects and it's my plan to always focus upon your positive aspects because I always feel best when I'm focused upon your positive aspects and I'm sure that you're like everybody else in the world you've probably got some negative aspects but don't tell me about them because <laughs> I don't want to know about them I don't even want to discover them I'm gonna keep looking for your positive aspects and if I should stumble on one sort of accidentally and I find myself feeling a little tense about about who we might be together. I'm gonna to do everything I can to withdraw my attention from whatever that is, because nothing is important to me, dear person, who may very well be the person I walk the rest of the world with. Dear person, this is the thing that matters most to me. I want to go with my flow. I want to go with my flow. And so what I'm saying to you, potential partner of mine, you might not want to spell it out quite this like this on the first day, but... <laughs> What you really want to mean as you're interacting with is I plan to go with my flow and I don't hold you responsible for me going with my flow, but if you make it easy for me to go with my flow, then I'm more likely to go with my flow. So I'm not looking for somebody particularly troubling. I'm just not going to hold you responsible for going with my flow. And so now let's see how it goes. I'm going to keep going with my flow and you keep going with your flow and maybe we'll have a wonderful time together. And if we do, then we'll keep renewing it for another day and 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 another day. And maybe as we walk together, this life will keep inspiring more from each of us. And maybe our individual vibrational escrows will do a sort of combining thing where we're really better together than we are apart. Wouldn't that be delicious? And as that happens and the universe calls us and source is calling me and source is calling you and source is calling me and source is calling you and they're calling us to the same place, won't we have another glorious rendezvous and another and another and another and another? When Esther ran across the idea of dragging Jerry off with her, <laughs> she had no idea the depths of satisfaction that were waiting for her in vibrational escrow. In other words, when she first made the decision that she wanted to go with him, took her some time to talk him into it, when she first made the decision that she wanted to go with him, she was looking very peripherally at who they would be together, but their life continues to expand. In other words, their relationship becomes more, not less, as time goes by, as each of them expands into something more, as each of them is out there living life and each of them is contributing to vibrational escrow and each of them are closing the gap on that vibrational escrow, it feels better to be together than anything else. And so they stay together, you see. Not out of commitment, out of desire, out of calling, out of inspiration. So you could say to future 
girlfriends as you're meeting them. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm always inspired to love you.